When you read research papers that look at clinical trials, sometimes you see words such as per protocol, intention to treat, superiority, and inferiority. If you don't understand these terms, you will have trouble interpreting the results. Today, I will show you what these terms mean. And once you understand that, reading a research paper will be much easier for you. Well, let's talk about this concept, superiority, equivalence, and non-inferiority trials. The first thing is, when designing a clinical trial, you have to be clear on what you're trying to show. If it's superior, you're trying to say A is better than B. If you're trying to say superior, it means A is not different from B. If you're trying to say non-inferior, A is not worse than B. The second key concept is you must have a pre-specified difference or delta that you want to detect. And you need to keep an eye on the two-sided 95 confidence interval for the results. So let's go through this. The first one is superiority trials. It is designed to detect a difference between two treatments, or A is better than B. And it is proven to be superior where you actually see a difference or delta between the two treatments. And the two-sided confidence interval excludes zero. So I'm going to show you all these delta. As long as it's more than zero, that means you're showing a difference. You're trying to say it's A is better than B. So now the next step is to look at the 95% confidence interval. And as you can see, it failed superiority. Here, the lower border of confidence, 95% uh, confidence interval did not touch zero. So everything, you're confident that everything is above zero. So now you can say that superiority is shown. The next one is equivalence trials. It is designed to confirm the absence of meaningful difference between two treatments. In other words, A is no different from B. So the thing you want to start is, is the upper and lower border. You want to say that the treatment effect lies within these two borders. The first one is the delta and this left, the one on the left is negative delta. And you want to make sure the two-sided 95% confidence interval falls within these boundaries. So the first example here, you can see the 95% confidence interval crosses negative 10 or negative delta, so it has failed equivalence. Now this next one, it shows both the 95% confidence interval, they lie within the borders of the positive and negative 10 delta. So equivalence is shown. So the next version, non-inferiority trials. These are designed to see if a new treatment is no less effective than an existing treatment. Or in other words, A is not worse than B. Here, the border is only on the left side, on the negative delta side. And what you want to say is the two-sided confidence interval does not go past negative delta. In this first example, fail non-inferiority because you can see the 95% confidence interval has crossed the line, has crossed negative delta. And in this version, in this uh, result, non-inferiority is shown because the lower border of negative of the 95 in confidence interval did not cross negative 10. Recap, these are the three different trials. The first one on the left, superiority, is shown. And you remember the criteria? You must have a delta. And number two, the confidence interval must not touch zero. And in the middle, to recap, you must keep both borders between the positive and negative delta. And then the final one on the right, none inferiority, first, you want to make sure that the negative, the, the lower border of the 95% confidence interval does not cross the negative delta. Let's talk about intention to treat analysis. 
The definition of attention to treat analysis is that all patients are analyzed in a group to the original treatment assignment as intended, but not on the treatment eventually received. So it's a mouthful, but I'm going to show you an example what it really means. So an example here, you have 200 patients and you randomize them into two groups, group A and group B. Group A has 102 patients and group B has 98 patients. But in reality, not all patients will receive their treatment. What happened is three died before intervention, two not suitable for intervention, and one lost to follow-up. So eventually only 96 of them received treatment A. And then on the right, on the B side, so one died before intervention, four not suitable for intervention, and zero lost for follow-up. So which one is intention to treat analysis? What you want to do is all of them as intended group, as per randomized, they were all 102 were included in the intention to treat analysis on the A. And on in the B side, all 98 of them include were included in the intention to treat analysis. So what is the benefit of it? It preserves the validity of original randomization, and it uses all available data on all randomized patients. And it represents more of a real life situation because when you give a patient a drug or medication, not all of them will take, they won't take it as, as prescribed. The downside is it may limit applicability to general population if the compliance is really poor. And the second thing is dif it's difficult if there's a lot of missing outcomes on your withdrawn or non-compliant patients. Now, what is per protocol analysis? Per protocol analysis refers to the inclusion in the analysis of only those patients who strictly adhere to the protocol. So to go back to the figure, what you want to do is only those who completely receive the treatment those in A, 96 in A, they were included in a per protocol analysis. And now on the right side, we see that 95 of them received treatment B, so they are included in the per protocol analysis. So typically in research studies, you don't choose one or the other. They typically do both as a form of showing robustness in your analysis. They are showing both sides, one to see the real life situation and another to see what the true effect is. And so the benefit of per protocol analysis, the benefit is that it estimates the true efficacy of an intervention. And the downside is it does not represent real life situation. That was a short snippet from one of my research courses called Clinical Research Foundations, where I will be teaching you different study designs and how to plan your research projects so that things move smooth and fast.